it has a tremendous reputation on Long Island. And I've been involved with them before. And let's give CSEA and Chris, and, and, and Chris a, a job as well. I cannot talk enough about 66 on Long Island. And, and I can, right, I can, I get it. Uh, their laborers in New York, uh, just a side note, Local 79, uh, when I left the city, when I left, I retired, um, 79 was kind enough to hire me. Uh, who's here from 79? So, obviously, the, the guys that hired me are long gone, um, and they started me off, and we now do all these events, and we were on daily news, and that's really because 79 gave me the opportunity to start off uh, with, their, with their publication and website, so let's give 79 a great round of applause. That's in the city. But on Long Island, 66 is the king. 66 is where it's at. In fact, uh, I don't know if John is here, John Dorso. I spoke to John, he said, you got 70, you got 66? You, the, you, you're gonna honor the, the, the business manager, 66? I said, yeah, he said, yes. He said, boy, he never says yes. How'd you do that? I said, I don't know, I, I asked him and he said, yes. Um, people say yes to me a lot. So, uh, let's give them a tremendous support. This is a really a force <laughs> Further ado, I know uh, I just got a note. Stop with the jokes. So, uh, a couple of people. First, uh, Debbie Burko is here, CEO of uh, Della Russo Vision. Is, is uh, Debbie still here? And we're going to invite her to talk. We're giving her about thirty seconds, maybe a minute. Debbie, come on up. Good evening. On behalf of Dr. Jeffrey Delarusso, we want to thank Neil for putting on this prestigious event tonight, and we thank you for having us. Delarusso Laser Vision has such a unique relationship with the unions and their members. We are the largest and longest family-owned LASIK vision center in the country. Dr. Joseph Delarusso founded the practice in 1990, and he was one of the founders to get LASIK FDA approved. Continuing in his legacy, Dr. Jeffrey Delarusso, who is our surgeon today, has continued to pioneer and is the first doctor to perform bladeless lacing. So many union members and their families have undergone this life-changing procedure, and we will continue to offer it as part of the benefit package for many years to come. Union members keep our cities running and are the backbone of our communities. We want to thank you all for being part of this. We've made it a core part of our business, ensuring that union members and their families have access to clearer vision for the past 20 years. We understand that health care is one of the most significant expenses for American workers. We want to continue to work with the unions to ensure that the members have access to the best benefits available. At Delarusso, we continue to expand into markets. We're actually located across the street, um, but we are also located in New York, New Jersey, and throughout Connecticut. Our goal is to provide the absolute best patient care in the most convenient locations. We're looking forward to meeting everyone here and continuing to work with the unions. Thank you for having us. And it's my pleasure to introduce a, a great attorney uh, from a great, uh, really a great firm. And is Erin still here? Erin McCabe. Good evening. I want to thank uh, Neil Patel and Vincent Hedda for always um, having these events. I think that they're very important. And thank you very much to 282 also for always hosting the event. That's um, very generous, and it's a wonderful place to have an event like this. My name is Erin McCabe. I'm an attorney uh, with the firm of Gray & Gray, and we specialize in disability, which includes workers' compensation, social security disability, we do 9-11 claims, 
anything in relation to uh, on-the-job injuries or off-the-job, including with Social Security. So Neil gave me my 30 seconds for that pitch, but I did want to say I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I am also on the board of directors of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire Memorial Scholarship. I had to bring this wow. up because I'm very excited. <laughs> with the scholarship, okay? If you have a member, it doesn't have, and it doesn't also have to be a union member or a family member who has been found to have a permanent disability under workers' compensation or, God forbid, has died in the line of duty, there are scholarships available for children from undergraduate through graduate school. Right now, the scholarship is $6,000 a year. And really the qualifying factor is if one of the parents has been found to have a permanent disability. So if you have any questions or um, just take some information so that you can uh, give this out to your members, we would appreciate it. We're always looking to uh, give out more scholarships. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Sina Andre, and thank you for coming. And if you need to contact us, just contact Stephanie West. Stephanie at laborpress.org. But she has nothing to do next week. So, uh, and now, and now, Kelly O'Brien is going to talk about B M I M D. Who is that? You're going to be very surprised. This is incredible. Thank you, Neil. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Kerry O'Brien. Welcome to your doctor's appointment. I got some good news and I've got some bad news. What do you want to start with? We'll do the bad news first. All right, 27% of all of your spend on healthcare in your, in your organization is on pharmaceuticals. 27%, that's not hospital visits, not, that's not behavioral health, that's just pharma. Of that, 9% of that is on weight loss drugs. So that's kind of good news. We're doing something. That's kind of good news. A quarter of all of that, um, or I should say two of your top four drugs are weight loss drugs of your spend. Two of your top four. However, 54% of the employees in any organization currently have diabetes or are diagnosed with obesity. So 54, that's a tipping point. 54% of America is now in a chronic disease state. I told you it was bad news. I told you. So 54%, and the thing is, of that pharma spend, you're only affecting 1.7% of your employee base. We still got over 52% to try and get to. So what does that mean? Well, that's a, a forecasted 68% increase in pharma. But there's good news. There's still good news. The good news is it works. That's the really good news, right? If you've seen the GLP ones, if you've seen any of the peptides, they really do work. Physiologically, they work. Um, however, it's about ten thousand dollars a year per member to be on the drugs. So, the good news is we can really fix this. We have to do two things: reduce the cost of the drug, and also create wraparound programs. I call it the weight loss hug. Give you a weight loss hug when you feel like you're going to drop off. I'm not going to let you drop off because we have registered dietitians, we have wellness coaches, we have folks that can keep you on your program. And so at BMIMD, that's what we do. We help you with the pharma cost, and we also do the wraparound programs with it. If you haven't come to our back table, we have technology that goes right in your phone, and from your beautiful face, we're gonna take your blood pressure, your heart rate, your HRV, your respiration, your stress level, and your A1C, all in about 10 seconds. I'm telling you, it's a great time to be alive. Like, really, who really thought this was going to happen? It's happening now right from your phone. So we can do everything we do virtually. We have doctors on staff 24-7. We're there if you need us. Um, and so we work with the unions. We work with the corporations. Come visit us. We put a little flyer on your chair. Come visit me. We'd like to do an analysis to see how much money we can save. So we're moving on to the, to the planning committee. Uh, the uh, uh, planning committee giving out the awards, uh, Jim Franchancy. Franchancy. Fran right? Frankie. Close. I, I keep practicing. Yeah. Just he, say Jim. So, Westerbank developed a program specifically for unions.
discounts, etc. You really should talk to them. There's nothing like it. I, I tried to, uh, I tried with several other banks. They laughed at me. We don't do discounts. We don't do any of that stuff. And Jim said yes. I couldn't believe it. And he went to the CEO, Jim, right? Yep. Went to the top. It's, it's an amazing program where there are discounts. There are no fees for banking, etc. So it's really special. And with us, Steve DiBiase, who's our consultant for healthcare, along with you know a hundred other consultants. And Steve is going to work with me on. Uh, we have a large health program uh, that has not been announced yet. It's going to be June fifth. It's going to be right here. Uh, and we have about 70 unions already uh, signed up. Health is big, big issue for unions and very costly. So thank you, Steve, for, for joining us on that committee. And now we're going to turn it over to who's first. I think Carolyn Rinaldi is up first. We didn't rehearse. You have to rehearse these things, really. You have to get together ahead of time. You have to rehearse. Ready? Go. Ready to go. go. Showtime, ladies and gentlemen. It's showtime. As Neil alluded to er, earlier, actually it was late last year when the bank asked me about, uh, do you know anything about unions? And uh, sorry, I didn't throw up, Jim. Sorry, sorry. I forgot the most important part of the program. And now, bringing up our event host, Mr. The Honorable. Thomas Gaswaldi, IBT Joint Council 16, President and Local 32 President. We could not do this program without Tom. Keep those, keep handshaking, continue, continue. This is a true story. Right after the pandemic, the unions were not, I used to do these all over different unions, we had daily news. No one said yes to me anymore. I said, no, we, can't. we don't do those anymore. We can't do it. We're not doing the programs anymore. And I called Tom. I was in tears. And Tom said, no problem. Neil, no problem. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. And here we are. So give Tom a nice, tremendous round of applause. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for coming to Local 22. Neil's like a fixture here. I made him an office in the corner. Now, it's, it's a great event. It gets bigger every time. And uh, again, our home is your home. We appreciate you coming. And I want to congratulate the honorees uh, tonight for a job well done, especially my friend Chris. Uh, it's been a lot, a lot of years, and the honor. Very good to see that. And uh, again, to all the honorees, uh, thank you. And enjoy the evening. And I'll turn it back over to Neil. Thank you for that. Are you sure? <laughs> we'll see. You, Who knows? We'll see. You're sure about it this time? Raising the mic. <laughs> You're sure about it? Raising okay. the mic. In between. In between. Okay. See, okay. Take, take. We're, we're good. We're good. Um, Thanks, Chris. What, what I had started to say is when Webster Bank first, the chairman of Webster Bank first asked me to look into this, um, I'm a former union member. All my family members were union members. My uncle was the treasurer of the corrections union for 12 years in New York City. So I understood the reason that we would want to focus our efforts on providing financial services. But one of the things that I went back to the bank with was that it's great to attract the union itself but what are we going to do for the membership? So we put together, and that was the longest part of the process, was putting together free accounts for the members. You know, the, the, the member benefits was the hardest part of that negotiation. And, but it was a, a critical part of what we did. Because all of you make your decisions based on your membership, the people that elect you, right? So that's where we are. And uh, I, I left uh, some brochures on, on some of the, the chairs. Uh, you can find out more about Webster Bank by looking at those, or you can go to the Labor Press website. We have a link on that website, a QR code, where you can go in and find out more about me. 
and find out more about Webster Bank and the commitment we've made to organized labor in the United States. And it is a national program, so we're, we're excited about getting into this. And we've been doing it for a year, and most people are, are a little shocked because most of the treasurers and business managers and presidents aren't used to getting solicited. They're used to law firms and insurance companies and different medical providers. We're the only bank that's actually working in this segment and trying to get them interested in banking with Webster. So I'd love to talk to you. We're, but right now, I, I have to introduce Carolyn Rinaldi. And I, I need to Chief of Staff at AT, ATU Local 1181, 1061, and she has a very diversified career. She came from staff, the staffing industry? Yeah. Management staffing. Unfortunately. Yes. But, but she, she's contributed a lot and has risen to the level of Chief of Staff at, at the local, so we'd like to provide, uh, provide her with this award. everybody. I'll take uh, my 30 seconds and uh, tell you a little bit about our firm, Acrosure, which, believe it or not, is the fourth largest uh, agency in the, in the world. You know, we're worldwide. Uh, seven or eight years ago, I sold to them as union benefit planners, and uh, now we still run our agency internal, but we've got an incredible amount of resources and services to all of labor. We're exclusively labor on the union benefit planners. Uh, two things I'd just like to rattle off really quick that I think uh, we want to focus on are uh, cost containment. Uh, one cost containment component that I think a lot of unions miss is prepayment analysis, uh, an analysis of fraud, waste, and abuse. So what happens is a lot of times your TPA will pay a claim, get a claim in and pay it. And you'll say, oh, we just paid 600000 it hit our stop loss, and so on. Or 300000 and it affects us a lot. But with prepayment analysis, which a lot, of you, a lot of TPAs, unfortunately, are not doing, we come in, look at fraud, waste, and abuse, and in some cases can reduce that cost significantly, 50%, 75%. And just because of that, they could be double billing, bulking, there's a number of different approaches towards billing. So um, fraud, waste, and abuse. Second, uh, a lot of the prescription, and uh, we alluded to it, some of the other uh, uh, people here talked about it, on the prescription side of things, uh, they're out of control. The prescription market is basically a Ponzi scheme. They can charge whatever they want, believe it or not, if you spend Five million, two and a half million is going into the prescription company's pocket, the PBM. So what you could do to solve that is put yourself into coalitions. There are a number of coalitions that I'm sure you might have heard of, the Delaware Valley, um, uh, National, and so on. But there are others that a lot aren't aware of, where you have as many as a million lives, a million, two million lives. The bargaining power is incredible. So we can and have, for a lot of our clients, saved as much as 30 to 40 percent without even changing the, plan, changing the plan design. So for instance, if you had Express Scripts and uh, you're paying 10 million, we could reprice it at 7 million and it'll be the same plan, same plan design. 
Somebody says, how did that happen? It's the concept of retail and wholesale. Retail was the 10 million, wholesale is the 7 million. They still want to keep the account, but if nobody's going to them and asking for the discount, you won't get it. So that's just a little bit of uh, what we do. Uh, enough about uh, AquaShore, again, my company, Union Benefit Planners uh, as well, my company connected to AquaShore. Uh, I'm here to uh, graciously introduce uh, Mr. Chris Silvera as uh, somebody that I've known for a number of years. He's always there helping and doing everything for the underprivileged, uh, the African-American and all the minorities and doing what he does best for the Teamsters. He's a dear friend and uh, a gentleman and a scholar and so I just want to uh, bring up good Chris guy. Silvera. He's a good guy. Very good guy. and giving us a home to have this event. Our sponsors, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, you give so much to our community, and hopefully you get something back in return for my ATU brothers. You do good work each and every day. Don't get mad at eye. So, you know, we just had a little election and things went a certain kind of way. Um, don't despair. There was a time when we were illegal. We built a movement. There was a time when we had to work 16, 18 hours a day, six days a week, and we changed that. Nothing is going to stop us from continuing to provide service, effective, intervention in our members' lives to increase wages and increase and, and improve their condition. So don't despair. Smile, because we've got work to do tomorrow. I just uh, want to mention my partner in all these events, Joe Massena. Let's give him a nice round of applause. He's on all our committees. He volunteers. He, he doesn't even ask what this is about. He's going, like, okay. Who can, you know, when somebody says, like, okay, it's great. 
You don't have to go through those. We're doing those sort of things. No, no. Okay. So thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Yeah. That was next. Jarvis Brown, president of the CSEA Region 1 of Long Island. Remember, I'm a member. And you are, and you are a member. It's one of the things about Jarvis is that his philosophy is that if you want to affect change, you can't stand on the sidelines. You've got to be involved. And I think the people in this room are, are a testament to that fact is that we're not standing on the sidelines. We're going to get involved, and we're going to affect change. Um, he believes in the triumph of workers, and you got to be courageous and stand up. Like all of our other honorees have done the same thing. So um, we're proud to award Jarvis Brown. Again, I got this short mic. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say to everybody, thank you. It's, a, it's an honor and a blessing to uh, be here. Uh, having my opportunity March 1st to become um, the uh, Long Island Region President, responsible for 45,000 members on Long Island, wow. is a big task. And um, I think one of the biggest things we can take from that is um, in order for us to keep going forward, we have to make sure we're communicating to educate to our members out there and always organizing more people to come into the union because we are the backbone of what we do here in the United States and also in the state and the whole island, all right? So everybody keep the good work and thank you guys for the honor. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we'll meet uh, Vincent Alou, uh, business manager All the great things that Neil said about Local 66, a couple of things that stood out to me were that uh, Vincent's uh, mother and grandmother were both part of the union, and also as an apprentice, he realized early on that the union uh, movement was a lot bigger than any individual or self, and he learned from that, and look where he is now. Yeah, so let's yeah. uh, bring on Vincent Alou. <laughs> Thank you to our host, Local 282. They're partners of ours every single day of the week when we fight for our workers' rights, workers' protection. Uh, arm in arm, we fight together every single day. Um, I'd like to thank everybody back there that fights on behalf of the Laborers International Union of North America and our members. And I couldn't be more proud to be uh, up here representing all of you. So. I'm going to talk to you folks. Um, just a moment of perspective, right? So, um, 26 right to work states in the United States, right? Uh, eight out of the 10 lowest, still hovering around 7.25 minimum uh, minimum wage, 7.25 cents an hour minimum wage, right? Two states in the country with a union density over 20%. Two states in the country with a union density over 20%. Let that sink in, right? Hawaii and New York, you kind of go back and forth. One year might be Hawaii, one year might be New York. I'm not sure where it is this year, but um, if, if ever there was a, a rally cry for us to keep fighting forward, that's it. All right? We're the end of it here. Okay, everybody, listen up. We are the end of it here. New York goes, it all goes. All right? So, um, Thank you very much, and, um, and, and let us never for a second take for granted this sacred path that we walk representing our membership. It is critical. Thank you very much. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. We have a lot of friends. As I said, I work with, with um, 79, that was the first union that hired me, look what we put together. 
uh, laborers. I worked with laborers right after I left the city. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And if you're driving home, please have a car. All right? Thanks again. And we'll see everyone. I'm the executive director of the Union Labor Advisory Network. We are a site to support, educate, and promote union labor in our communities. Tomorrow's event, as everybody leaves, we're having our second annual Veterans Service Awards reception. I want to thank, well, you guys, this is an event to help support, raise awareness on transitioning veterans into career opportunities within the trades. Also support some of the initiatives to get vets, to help vets within our communities as well. So really proud uh, and privileged to work with so many different locals, uh, fund administrators, um, associations supporting labor. And again, uh, ULANetwork.com. Take a look at it. We're on video. And uh, follow us on our socials. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh.